back again with another video. I've been gone for a while. I'm sorry. I, I've been really busy uh, delivering packages and working with new clients and customers talking to them. Um, I was asked to do a video on a previous video I made about a young man going out to the cemetery and burying some nasty ass shit that he life began to fall apart on him. Um, so one of my viewers, my subscribers asked to uh, give a video about what was the outcome. After I made the video, I told you, I told the young boy, you know, go out there and dig the shit up and get it out of there. But then I realized he screwed it up at the beginning. But what makes you think he's going to do it right, digging it up? So I called him back, uh, got the uh, cemetery he went to, met him there. And if anybody is watching this that lives in New Orleans or have ever lived in New Orleans or um, visited to New Orleans, you know our cemeteries are uh, small cities. Uh, some of our cemeteries, if you go by uh, postal, the United States Post Office guidelines, there's enough residents in that one particular area to have its own zip code. So we got there, I filed him in. He went there at night, didn't know his way around. It took us almost three and a half hours to find where he put it. And uh, finally got there. Um, I could see a, a a uh, site that had fresh ground, you know, dug around it. So I, we went over there, and sure enough, that's what it was. This little dude, excuse me, had things mixed together off the web that only two things I could see before I broke it down actually matched. Everything else was fighting against each other. So I want to say, whoever put that on the web, I hope you're watching this. You need to be ashamed of yourself and go pull it off the web because you almost fucked up somebody's life completely with your bullshit. So we got, I told him I was gonna destroy it because I couldn't leave that up to him to do it either. I wrote the name down of the name that was on the tombstone. There was a man, I noticed that it said that he was a sergeant in the United States Army during World War II. So we left from there, I broke the stuff down, went to different locations uh, getting rid of it. And after I broke it down, sure enough, there was only about two or three things that he put in there that was actually right. Everything else was fighting against each other. Um, decided, oh, I need to get something to eat. And I wanted to find out more about this man whose name was on the tomb. So I stopped at a restaurant in New Orleans, had my laptop, pulled it out. It took me about 45, 50 minutes to pull this man's name out of the obituaries. And sure enough, in there... It made mention of his service in the army during World War II. Now this man, you can classify as an American hero. He had won the Purple Heart for being wounded in combat and the Silver Star for bravery. Uh, my father fought in World War II. He was also wounded in combat. But if anybody that's listening that was in the military or in the military, you know they don't hand out the Silver and Bronze Star for menial shit. You was actually, you did something of much bravery. So I decided, look, I better do something because now I would went out there and disturbed this man's peace again, disturbed his rest. Now I didn't want none of this falling on me. So after I ate, I went, it was almost uh, 4th of July, I went get an American flag. I stopped by one of the uh, uh, beer places, wine place, Martin Wine Cellar. You know, they have very good products there bought a bottle of Belgian ale, which Belgian beer, which it said in a man's obituary, his last battle was in the Battle of the Bulge, which is in Belgium. Got a pack of uh, Lucky Strike cigarettes. Didn't know if the man drank or smoked, but it was the idea of the offering, because that was a cigarette that was prevalent back in those days as Cools, Salem's, and Marlboro is today. Went by one of the, army, the big army surplus stores and bought a battle ribbon from World War II of the European theater. Went back to the graveyard, presented all this to the man, told him who I was, who the little boy was, why I was there disturbing his uh, rest, why this young man came and threw this nasty shit in front of him. Told him my own father had been in the Second World War, also got wounded. I was trying to make a connection with the spirit. Placed my offerings, explained to him, you know, as I put everything down, told him what it was. And uh, I left. When I got home, I did what I needed to do to cleanse myself. And about two hours 
after I came home, maybe two and a half hours, the boy called me all frantic again that his supervisor called him back to work to talk to them. They had to see him. Like I told him, I said, brother, anything that happens, you know, you can't blame me. I went out there to help you. You did this yourself. Go over there, see what they got to say. Call me after. Let me know what the outcome is. So uh, a little while later, he calls me. He said that they rescinded the suspension. He could come back to work the next day. Come to find out the man that he was actually having trouble with at his job had done this before with other employees and they had called him in before and gave him two warnings, a verbal warning, then a write-up. Now they suspended him for doing the same shit he was doing before. He gets a call right after that that his girlfriend's parents was at the hospital, they're releasing her, can't find a damn thing wrong with her. All the tests that they ran couldn't find anything wrong with her. So I wasn't sure as fast as that worked like that, I knew it was the, man, the spirit of this man who was reaching out in retaliation, pissed off that he was a good person in life, a brave person in life, he threw this nasty shit in front of him. Uh, I didn't think it was the Baron doing it because the work wasn't congruent with itself. So that fast, as fast as the effect took to him, damaging him, that spirit took it off of him because of the offerings I left for this man. Uh, now I can't stop y'all from going in the graveyard y'all gonna do what y'all want to I mean there's people out there saying I don't know what the hell I'm talking about I'm gonna do this work myself so if you're gonna do it I'm gonna give you two little things that's advice to keep your nuts out of a sling one do your homework now when I say this most of y'all models are gonna drop and never even thought of this that's why your ass get in trouble Every cemetery and graveyard has consecrated soil and unconsecrated soil, all right? Back in the day, unconsecrated soils are places they buried people that committed suicide or criminals and stuff like that. Now today, I can't remember how many years it went back, not that long, but it went back. At one time, committing suicide, that was a no-no to the Catholic Church. You couldn't pass through the Catholic Church. Uh, your insurance money was null and void. You wasn't going to get an insurance, you killed yourself. The Catholic Church backed away from that. Now you can pass through the Catholic Church if you committed suicide and the insurance companies pay the benefits off if you committed suicide. So if you're going to do that, do your goddamn homework and find out what's consecrated, what's unconsecrated. Because if you're going to do some dark-ass work, unconsecrated saw, you'll do better at it because these were bad people. You can almost say... They're in tranquil spirits, and even souls. Not tortured spirits, but they did shit when I was alive, placed them in this plot of land that wasn't consecrated, wasn't blessed by the priest doing a funeral. Holy water wasn't sprinkled across it doing a funeral. Incense wasn't burnt by the uh, grave site doing the funeral by the priest. Now, if you don't want to do that, all right, I'm not sure about small town graveyards, but I know in cities there'll be a big white cross in almost in the middle of that cemetery or graveyard can't miss it. it's white made of concrete some of them stand 20 feet in the air 25 feet in the air that is the sign and voodoo of where the first male was buried in that cemetery it's also the dwelling ground of the barons baron samedi baron lacroix baron criminal baron cemetery mama bridget that's it okay now if you're going to do it and you have that, you can go there and present your work. Not saying that the shit you put together is congruent. It's working with each other. It can still backfire no matter what because you put stuff together that didn't go with each other. It's fighting each other. It's going to retaliate on you. And then one of the barons may retaliate for putting this stupid ass shit in front of them. Okay? Now as the year is gone... Baron Saint B, they say that's his resting place because of the cross. But in, to me, and a lot of things in the old voodoo and Haitian voodoo, is Baron Lacroix, Baron the Cross. I mean, this is an academic argument. I mean, at least you have a 50 50 shot of 
your work going through because you're working with one of the barons. I don't know which one you're connecting with, you know, but you're working with the barons. And uh, I wouldn't do it. If you want to, go ahead and do it. And when your shit blow up, give me a call, you know. I'll do what I can to get you out of it. Uh, my first thought was to leave the little dude, you know, as a lesson. But I couldn't do that. And I think going back out there presenting these offerings to this man, they appeased the man. And everything that was put out came back that quick. So that made me think he disrespected the man for putting this nasty shit in front of him. When I went out there explained and presented good offerings to the man that he understood, that he knew in his life, he rescinded what he sent out that fast. That's why I don't think with the work not even matching, everything just being thrown together all stupid because of this website, I think that's what happened. So that was a video that was uh, asked to be made about what happened to the little dude. That's what happened. I'll be making more videos. Uh, I'm coming up with a documentary in New Orleans. I'll be taking you all around to different sites in New Orleans, uh, Congo Square, uh, St. Louis Cemetery, where Marie Lavoie is, St. Roth Cemetery, where Dr. John Montagny is uh, resting. He's the teacher of Marie Laveau. Um, Bayou St. John, Lake Pontchartrain, these locations are still very important in voodoo here in this city. We still use Bayou St. John, Lake Pontchartrain. Uh, Congo Square is doing voodoo fest, uh, voodoo Zans, Mambo and stuff go out there and perform for the public. But this was a spot in New Orleans that the slave owners allowed us to have to go out there, sing, dance, play our drums, and let off a little steam, not too much, but to let them do that because they was definitely afraid of the Haitian slaves that we had in New Orleans after the revolution hated. They didn't want that to happen here. Um, the governor at that time after the revolution cut all slaves from Haiti coming in to the port of New Orleans. They went other places. They didn't want that to rear its head up here. So I'll be out there making a video with that, uh, talking to some uh, respected Mambos here. So I should be making that video for y'all soon. Um, that's it. I just want to t tap on what happened to the little guy. Uh, one of my subscribers asked to do it. So uh, sorry it took me so long to make another video. So I'm back again as always. Please like, share, and subscribe. And hello to my new subscribers. Thank you very much. You may hit me up anytime. By, uh, comments or call me and uh, we'll talk. So again, thank y'all again. Like, share, and subscribe.